Hello and welcome to a mini lecture about the span of the Jones polynomial. So this is the big theorem, the big theorems from section seven of the notes. And these are brand new applications of the Jones polynomial that weren't known until the 1980s. So um, it's quite exciting and uh, we can prove them. Um, so here today, I'm gonna to tell you the statements and explain what they say. So let's begin. Um, oh, and by the way, let's go back. Um, so this is about the theorem you can read on page 41 um, or more properly theorem 7.12 and 7.13 from later on which together imply the theorem on page 41. Okay so let's begin. Um, here is some definitions. So we're going to let f be a Laurent polynomial in some variable x. So what do I mean by x? I mean it's either t or it's a. It's t if our f is going to be a Jones polynomial and it's a if it's going to be a Kaufman bracket. So given such a Laurent polynomial f we define mf to be the highest power of our variable x that we can see in f. And we define little m of f to be the lowest power of x that we can see in f. And we define span of f to be their difference. In other words you look for the highest and lowest powers subtract the little one from the big one, that's the span. And what we're going to do is we're going to study this, the span, for the Jones polynomial. So let's look at some examples. Here we have a not k, it's the trefoil. Now uh, we remember because we've worked out that its Jones polynomial is minus t to the 4 plus t cubed plus t. So uh, what is capital M of V? Well, the highest power is four. So that means that M VK is four. Capital M VK is four. And what's the smallest power? Well, there it is. It's one, right? So little M of VK is one. And uh, so the span of VK, that's four minus one, which is three. Okay. Easy enough. Let's look at another one. Here's the hop flink. We're going to call it L. Now, uh, we recall because we worked it out, uh, we will, well, we check that this is the uh, hop flink with hop link with linking number plus one, and it is. So we know it's Jones polynomial. It's minus t to the five over two minus t to the one over two. Well, so what's the highest power? It's this five over two. And what's the lowest power? It's this one over two. Uh, so that uh, M, capital M, is 5 over 2, little m is 1 over 2, so the span, which is 1 minus the other, well that's 4 over 2, which is 2. So, what do we notice? Uh, we notice, taran tara, fanfare, that 3 here and 2 here, these are the numbers of crossings in the diagrams. Okay, how wonderful. So let's see if that keeps happening. Let's look at some more examples. So for this T here, which is just, uh, what is it? It's the trivial link of two components drawn with uh, two crossings. Well, then I suggest you look up the Jones polynomial of this thing um, and you can see that its span is one. Uh, if we take u to be this diagram here of the unknot with just a single crossing in it, then, well, the Jones polynomial of the unknot is 1. So the highest power, what is 1? One? 1 is t to the 0. So the highest power appearing in that Jones polynomial is 0, and the lowest power appearing in that Jones polynomial is 0. So the span is 0 minus 0, it's 0. And then finally, let's take v. V was a bad choice of letter, I'm sorry. But let's take V to be, again, the trivial link of two components drawn this way. Well, in that case, the span is 1, uh, because it's exactly the same polynomial as the one in the first example there. So, what do we notice here? We notice that uh, in no case is the span of the Jones polynomial equal to the number of crossings in the diagram. And... Well, given our excitement in the previous two examples, this makes us sad. Well, let's see what the real theorem says. Here we are, theorem 7.12. As usual, let L be an oriented link. 
with a connected diagram D. And we're going to assume that D has n crossings. Then the span of the Jones polynomial of L is less than or equal to n. With equality, in other words, this less than or equals to is an equals if D is reduced and alternating. So look carefully. To state the theorem at all, we need the diagram to be connected. And then to draw the strongest conclusion, the equality for the span, we need it to be reduced and alternating. Okay, so let's go and see uh, how the theorem compares to what we observed before. Um, so over here on the right, I've started off a table of the links we had before. And there's some columns there. There's a column for a tick or a cross if the knot is if the if the diagram is reduced. Uh, there's a column for a tick or a cross if it's alternating or not, if it's connected or not. And here I've also I've already put in for you the spans of the Jones polynomials and the numbers of crossings. So I suggest you pause, fill in the ticks and crosses in these three columns if you can, and uh, and decide how that compares with the theorem. Well, uh, let me have a go. Uh, let's look at reducedness. Well, remember, when is a diagram not reduced? That's if there's a crossing I can delete that leaves it disconnected. Well, no. Whoops. In the first case, I can't. Still connected whatever I delete. In the second case, I can't delete any crossings and leave something disconnected, so it's reduced. Same in the third case, not in the fourth case, right? Uh, let's see that. If I delete this crossing, then I can separate it into two parts, the part inside my blue circle and the part outside my blue circle. So that's not reduced. There we go. And well, the last one's not even connected to begin with, so let's just leave a blank there. Okay, which diagrams are alternating? The first one is, the second one is. The third one is not, right? Because my crossings go, as I travel around the left-hand circle, my crossings go over, over. So it's not alternating. And uh, the next, yes, that's alternating because it goes over, under. And the final one, is it alternating or not? Well, yeah, uh, because there aren't any crossings that could be not alternating to contradict it. But again, this is not a prime example. Okay, uh, final column, are they connected? Yes, 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 no. Because again, I can separate my diagram using a circle. There's the part inside and the part outside. It's not connected. Okay. So now, what do those results tell us? Well, let's look at the theorem. Let L be an oriented link with a connected diagram, D, with N crossings. Okay, so in all these cases, the first four, where my diagram is connected, then I can draw a conclusion. It's that the span is less than or equal to the number of crossings. So these blue inequalities I've drawn in, these have to hold according to the theorem. And observe that they do. What else? With equality, if D is reduced and alternating. So in the cases where the diagram is also reduced and alternating, I actually get equality. So for this trefoil, the diagram was reduced and alternating, so I know I get equality. For uh, the Hopflink, the diagram is reduced and alternating, so I know I get equality. For this trivial link of two components here, well, the diagram's reduced, but it's not alternating, so I can't learn anything else. Similarly, with the unknot with the single crossing in the diagram, it's not reduced, so I can't learn anything else. And in the final case, the diagram wasn't connected at all, so I learn absolutely nothing at all. And let's observe that the cases where we have equality, we indeed, well, the cases where the theorem tells us we should have equality, we do, 
good. The theorem hasn't been disproved. Um, the cases where we couldn't get any more, well, in those cases, the inequality is actually strict. And in the final case where it looked like we had a complete contradiction, where the span was bigger than the number of crossings, well, that was a case where the theorem didn't apply at all. Okay, so let's take a look finally at theorem 7.13. It's a simple consequence. If L has a reduced alternating connected, this phrase reduced alternating connected comes up the whole time. If L has a reduced alternating connected diagram with n crossings, then it has no connected diagram with fewer crossings. In particular, if it's a knot, then the diagram is connected. So if you have a reduced alternating diagram of a knot with n crossings, then that's the smallest number of crossings you can get at all. In particular, um, the trefoil, that's a reduced alternating connected diagram with three crossings. There is no diagram with two crossings, or one, or zero, so it can't be the unknot. So you see, this theorem very magically proves for us lots of results that we've been working quite hard to determine uh, throughout the course. Okay, so that is the end of the mini lecture.